and welcome to this edition of the Time with Heim podcast. I'm your host, Lynn Cordes, joined by Superintendent Heim and a special guest. Yes, we have a guest today, but first... We've got a lot of things going on. Well, we have... Uh, yeah, it's the end of the year, month, <laughs> the month which, yep. and it gets us to Halloween. Yes. Which is uh, always a fun time for the kids. And uh, teachers will love Friday morning when the kids had all that candy on Thursday night. All the elementary teachers always love that. So please limit, put a little bit of limit, but it never worked for me. So I don't know why I can expect our parents to do different than I did when my kids were little. They used to say, we don't want all the candy at home. So they sent it to the school, but... <laughs> well, that's, that's what we'll do, at least all the sales. Well, you know the candy lasts more than a day, so at least the teachers just have one day. Hopefully, it's all gone by Monday. Or they can put it in treasure box for Friday fun and then send them back home there with you the kids. Go. There That's what we like. But we do have an event for our families Thursday from MacArthur High School. You want to share? Yes, MacArthur High School is having a haunted house. I believe you, it takes canned food to get in. So they're doing it as a fundraiser. And that's going to be phenomenal because it's a little scary. And then the <laughs> last activity, if you can make it to the end, is screamish. So we'll we'll see how they enjoy that and see some of the photos from after Thursday. Yes. But we've got a few other things going on. This week is Red Ribbon Week. Yes. And so every day should be have a dress eight day. So again, look at your notices from your school. Get on your site's web pages. But I believe we're doing that all the way pre-K through 12. So I think all of our schools are taking part in Red Ribbon Week. Yes, Which sir. is, we've been doing that for now since we were kids almost. So uh, most parents understand Red R Ribbon Week because they've either been a part of it as a parent or even as, when they were kids. But it's one of our Great weeks we do to, in, to try to deter drug use. Absolutely. And then we had some great things going on with, well, in addition to Red Ribbon Week, sometimes our schools also hold the canned food drives. Yes. And so there a lot of the schools are doing with Thanksgiving and Christmas. So start paying attention for, for food baskets and canned food drives and, and different things to help needy families. Uh, students kind of get it on their mind to do different things. I know we've done blankets before at elementary schools and different things to, to give to kids. So uh, start, again, pay attention to your school's webpage, look on there, and it's an exciting time because one of the things you do try to do in school is try to work with kids and teach them to be more service-minded and, and, and community-minded to, to do things to help others in need. And the food that we do acquire does go back to our local food bank and to our Salvation Army. So please, thank you in advance for donating because that's going to make a big difference. And the kids get something, yes. you know, to, to work on as far as community service related. Yes. Now we have a celebration from two of our athletes. Yeah, we had some track, some cross-country runners make the state meet. And that's coming up really, I mean, this week. Yeah, this weekend will be the state cross-country meet. And that's kind of always an interesting event if you've never been. They they run all the state cross-country meets right there at uh, Edmond, I believe Santa Fe, Edmond yes. Santa Fe. And uh, it's it's a cool track there, and there'll be a lot of people there. And it, it's one of the most, you can sit in the bleachers and watch the meet and, and see a lot of it. So it's one of the best cross-country meets to go to. So for those that will be attending to cheer our runners on, uh, good luck to our runners. And we hope that we can get some of that footage streamed and see what they have. And if not, then we'll definitely let, let you guys know the results. And now to our guest. Hey, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, we've been doing robotics this year. We're, we kind of tied it with Lego League. And so we've always had a robotics competition about this time. But this year we have our, our Lego League robotics competition. We're very excited about that. So we have Miss Doris Bigler here to explain it. All right. So we do, we usually do robotics and we usually have done VEX robotics in the past, um, but we have found that Lego robotics we've always had and kids and parents and everybody else just feel super comfortable with Legos. They love Legos, everybody's had Legos since they were little bitty. Nothing is scary about a Lego. So when we had the opportunity to get some grants to help us send some of our teams to uh, Lego league competitions, which is bigger than our um, community one that we've done in the past, this means that we'll have teams be able to go and compete against other teams in our state. Um, and if they make it past state, they'll get to go to what's called Worlds, which will be in Austin in April, and they'll get to compete against teams all around the world. So we are so excited because we have some really, really smart kids that are uh, just the most talented builders and coders. And I'm, I'm excited to see what they're gonna do. And this is our first time doing it. So we're gonna have the small one um, tomorrow. And then we'll have a larger one for our whole of our uh, elementaries um, in January. Okay. And so January, so now I'm going to get ahead of myself here. You can just say <laughs> it's still too to be determined. But January, we do the, we've been doing the robotics 
when is the the boat races? We do those too. So we used to do the robotics in April, and that was to give everybody time to do the cardboard, and then we would do in the spring robotics. So that way, after testing, it's kind of a fun follow up to the end of the year. Um, but because Lego Robotics, their competitions are held, the regionals are in November, the state is in December, and their worlds are in April, we've moved up our robotics and switched back. So now our robotics will be in the fall and winter, and cardboard will be April 14th. Okay, so in April we get the, the boat. This, yes. for, for clarification, yes. these are events that people look forward to. I look forward to them because any STEM or, 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 or that the creativity in our students is always awesome. So and and talk about the because we are coming from Vex to Lego, the components of what because tomorrow is our first smaller competition. Yes. But then I think they have something in November, correct yes. too. So what is it that's different and how does it okay. look to our community? So the reason we're doing the one that we are doing tomorrow is because regionals are in November. So we can send so many teams to regionals. Regionals is what they get past to get to state, but regionals is in November, so we had to do ours sooner. So we're doing that one tomorrow, and it is different. So VEX, we used to have the coding, the driving, the notebook, and creativity. Those were the four different components. With LEGO League, they have a presentation. So they have to come up with a problem based around the theme, which is submerged, so underwater. They have to research it, come up with a solution. They're doing a whole presentation in front of judges. So we have the red leg soldiers who are also coming to help us do judging and they're gonna present their, their solution, their problem, their robot, how they built it, why they built it. Then they'll do the missions, which is the second part. Is that's where they code their robot. They've completely coded it before they come. They get to try it out and they'll code the robot to do missions. So there's 14 missions that they can do. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. And they only get two and a half minutes to run their code and they get three chances. So we're real excited about that. And the third part is learning about um, gracious professionalism. So that is the third part of the competition. So it's a little bit different than we've done in the past. I'm excited to see presentations and these kids are really having to dig in to do more speaking in front of people, mm -hmm. which is something that they're gonna have to do later on anyway. So I think this will really get them set for later down the line in middle school and high school. Now, and there are like the grade levels. Tell us the grade levels of who's competing tomorrow. Okay, so tomorrow we have elementary. So we have some third grade all the way to fifth grade. And then we also have middle schools are competing. So we have a couple of middle schools that are competing also, although the middle schools already are guaranteed to go to regionals. Um, they're just competing, I think, for practice. But out of the winners tomorrow, two of the highest for elementary will get to compete at regionals. Okay, and, awesome. and we're, this will be streamed? This will not because of the format. And so I'm glad you brought that up because that I don't want them to look for that. It's a lot of in the classroom work, correct? Right, so when we're doing the presentations part and they're getting judged in front of judges, um, it's a lot to have a camera right in front of okay. them. Um, it's already, they're gonna speak in front of adults and do their presentation. So to live stream that, I think this time maybe we'll hold off the video mm -hmm. and then share the videos later. But the mission part where they're gonna have their robots actually coded to do the missions, I think that'll be the exciting part and we are gonna videotape that for sure and share. Okay, and now where are we doing this at? We are doing that at the Tomlinson STEM Arena. Awesome. Yeah, at the, at the LRC. Yeah. So we love the LRC. It's one of our favorite places. They always make us so comfortable. We love it here. So we're happy to have it here right in the central Lawton. Awesome. And I'm excited because we are partnering with our military partners. Our yes. Community, the Red Lakes. Yeah, the Red Lakes for STEM soldiers. They're here today helping set up. They're building Legos. I had two of them that said they'd never in their life built Legos before. So they are first time builders today. So I'm excited for that. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you want to share with our community about what they can look forward to? You know, you're doing a lot of innovative practices here. You've had NASA stuff come in. So we're really thankful that you're bringing yeah. all of this incredible opportunities for our students to come. But what can we share with our community that they can expect? Well, we can definitely expect a lot of more, um, a lot more uh, events at your schools. Our Makerspace teachers are great. All of them, every school has a Makerspace teacher. Um, they are trained and they have great ideas. They are all very um, excited and passionate about STEM and learning. So use them, come ask them, ask them questions. The kids love STEM. We're gonna do a lot more um, uh, events with families and outreach and things like that. So um, we do bring in some NASA people uh, as a solar system ambassador. I've also got some of our teachers who have been trained and now are doing that also. 
Um, we work with FISTA, um, and they have some events that we are going to combine and do some things with them, even on weekends, um, and some events with Fort Sill. So we love STEM, and we love our community, and I'm excited to be able to partner with anybody. If you know somebody who has a business or has a talent that is STEM-related, contact me. Hit me up. I would love to have you come to my STEM gym that is at the Washington Elementary School um, and come and see me, and we can work something out and create an event. You know, from my seat, you know, you move here. When I moved here as a superintendent, one of the first things I looked at was we didn't have maker spaces or STEM labs. And that's one of the first things I jumped out there, you know, when we got the foundation and different people on board, we got donations. And obviously we found the money and we put all that in the school, you know, and great ideals are great, but they don't work when, unless you have people like Doris. You know, it makes it easy for me. It's like, hey, we're going to do all this. <laughs> But I'm just going to get out of the way and watch it happen. And, and that's what makes my job easy is when you have people, you know, we brought Vanessa with us. We're back. You know, some of y'all say I stole her first. He did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> but she okay. came back to Lawton. She, she is a Lawton graduate. And she's huge into STEM and she has it. But, you know, when getting Doris involved was really great. And congratulations again. You yes. won a big award not too long ago. We're very excited for you for winning that award. And, and again, that's an honor for Lawton Public Schools again. And, and well-deserving and, you know, that our maker spaces across the district, you know, we we had a, a group here last week mm -hmm. and they got to see the fifth grade. And it's always fun to go to, to Freedom just because Freedom's a unique school in itself. But they were so amazed at, at, at how engaged and how the collaboration and how, how the students are with STEM and what we're trying to do to get get our students involved in STEM or STEAM or just that that collaborative activity and, and creativity at, all the way from pre-K up. And, and so uh, thank you so much for Absolutely. what you do for our students. And we're really excited about the Lego. I can't wait to get by and look at a little bit of that tomorrow and just kind of see it, what it looks yeah. like. It's going to be fun to see. And, and watching the kids when when they're getting their robots to work, is, is, it's just, you know, it's one of those things you really enjoy as a superintendent. Well, and the problem solving that they're doing already and the conversations they're having yes. is really fun and, you know, it, mm -hmm. engaging. So I, I'm excited to well, see Well, this that. is a scary generation. I, I tell this story and, and, you know, you don't, want to get out there and say, oh, here it is. But, you know, AI is here to stay. And it's kind of scary, especially when you're 60. But, you know, when you when you listen to the younger people take about artificial intelligence, that in 10 years, if you can't work with artificial intelligence, you're not going to be able to work. There's not going to be many jobs out there for you. And, and so doing things like this and getting where it's natural to our students to, to do this it, it, it is so important to us. So uh, hopefully we pride ourselves on being life ready. And, and AI is something that we're going to have to really push into our students' lives in order to make them life ready. Because as I say, I don't think in 10 years there's going to be many jobs out there. Uh, luckily for some of us, we'll be 70 in 10 years if we're still around and, and we'll, be able to, we'll be retired and we won't have to have a job. And that teaching comes with just the responsibility and how to use it versus yes. relying on it. Yes, yeah. so it's kind of interesting because we talk about, uh, and I'm getting too deep into AI, but you know, one lady I heard speak the other day, the, the, you know, if you have chat B, GPT, that's enough. You should have two or three and put all of there and, and get two or three of them. So you have three different opinions, so to speak, before you decide what you're going to put out. And so some of those things that we don't even think about that, yes, AI can be biased, but so can people be biased. So go get multiple opinions and then write your paper or, 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 or collaborate. But anyway, thanks again. Yeah. We're glad you're on here. We look forward to tomorrow. And, yes, uh, it's going to be fun. A board meeting tonight. So yes. About the time this comes out. Yeah. And let's the, go ahead and tell them. Because... One of the big things is tonight at the board meeting, the uh, the board is going to approve our Christmas bonus. And, and, and we've always had a little bit of confusion about how those get divvied out. So it is in the documentation this year for everybody to see. So if there's any confusion, get with people. But it's basically, if you were working in August or before, which is most of our employees, you're going to get a full bonus. Don't, don't even worry about it. If you started October 1st or before, you get a half a bonus because the bonus Christmas bonus is basically for people who work and, and we get back and forth. Now, there are a couple little footnotes in there. If you're in, if you've used all your sick leave, then, then we're going to look at your case, case by case. If, if it was maternity or, or, or a long-term illness, those are things that you'll still get your bonus. If it's our employees who just have a problem with attendance, we've had a lot of employees talk to us about not trying to 
be tattletales or throw their fellow employees under the bus, but it's kind of disheartening to them that they get their bonus and come to work every day, and the person who's with them comes to work every other day and gets the same bonus. So those are some things we're looking at for the board to approve tonight, but uh, we'll make sure we communicate that and get that cleared up with everybody in the future. And uh, But again, you know, I say this every year. You know you got a great school board when tonight they're going to approve you know, hopefully, fingers crossed for everybody out there, <laughs> but they're going to improve. They always have a $2,500 Christmas bonus for our certified employees and $1,750 for our, for our support employees. And that's pretty exciting. And, and right here, right before Christmas. Yes. And, uh, you know, we're all waiting for those Black Friday ads are right around the corner. And it's that money goes a long ways for November people who got kids. Friday, so there, there we go. go. It's, it's going to be out there. Wow. Yes, wait for, for our staff. Just we'll push out some information so you have clarification on what that looks like and how that pertains to you. And we'll try to make it as clear as possible. There's always a case by case situation that we have to. You've got at. questions or anybody on the podcast info, info at lottenps.org. Go to the website, lottenps.org. We, we, we say this at every podcast, everybody we talk to. If you get there, and you struggle getting around, again, send us an email. We'll try to simplify it. It's very difficult to make a web page that's user-friendly for 20,000 people because user-friendly is different for different people. But our goal is to make it as few clicks as we can and make it easy for our parents and our staff to get to the clicks they need to. So again, lottenps.org or info at lottenps.org are the two key ones. And that's it. That's it. That's it for our podcast. Thank, thank you so much, Doris, for You're coming welcome. on. We're excited. We'll have some highlights and we'll have some videos to come on. Mr. Heim, thank you again. We'll be back next week. We have some special guests that just went to convention. We'll save that as a teaser for you. But until then, you guys be well, stay safe, and make positive impacts. Have a good one.